when I'm not playing the Lost Eye of Thundera on my Commodore Amiga 500. I love nothing more than cruising Third Earth in the Thunder Tank, listening to Aaron and John on the Amigos Podcast. Thunder, 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 Thundercats! Ho! Hi, everybody. Welcome to Amigos. I'm John. And I'm Aaron. That's awesome. And I love that every time I see it. It's great. It's <laughs> great. Lion-o. He said uh, my name. <laughs> he did. He did. He said your name. Uh, Aaron Lionel has introduced us to the, this current episode of Amigos. We are going to be talking about Bubble Bobble today. Bubble Bobble. Now, this game I, I want to me from I, system to system. <laughs> I want to talk to you about your sort of history with bubbles. Um, okay. Now, when you were a child, and you don't seem to be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't call you just by just by your countenance, just by your, the way that you you approach life. I would not peg you as a bubble bath man. Um, uh, I'm, I'm more of a shower man. Mm-hmm. But when I was a young lad, I I did enjoy a bubble bath. My kid loves them. He always has the bubble bath. But I do like bubbles. I play with bubbles with them. It's fun. You yeah, know? and um. It, it reminds me of the story that you once told long ago, but I think bears worth repeating about the time that you realized that you had transitioned from the party happy, uh, you know, late teen into the balding, somewhat overweight older man. Uh, why don't you recall that story for us now, Aaron? You had to bring that. You pulled this out. Of the, this is a setup. This whole game is a setup, isn't it, both? You punk. <laughs> Yeah, I used to go quite a few. I got. I used to hit the clubs in Lexington back in the day. It wasn't that long ago, by the way. It was what the nineties. So that was a twenty-five years ago now. <laughs> Fine, it was a long time ago, boat. <laughs> it was a long time ago, and I went to a club one night with my friends, and they wouldn't let me in because my I had a hat on, mm. a backwards ball hat. Mm. Was it a cowboy's hat? Um, I think it was a Reds hat, mm. believe it or not. It, it was the 90s. They had done something that decade. Yeah, that's true. So I go into the club, and it's a, a, not my normal fare, but we were with a guest, and we went there. And uh, they started, they had one of these bubble parties, which I'd never heard of or seen up to that point, mm-hmm. where they fill the whole bar with bubbles, you know? Oh, yeah. And I was sitting there, half covered in bubbles, watching some idiots dance on a bar, trying to get a refill. And I just that the the, the light slit f- switched off on me there. I'm like, well, this is it. <laughs> this is it. So it was. I knew at that point that my clubbing days were over. I was either going to have to just hit the, uh, you know, uh, the uh, coal miners lounge, mm-hmm. or just drink back at the pad. And so I've been drinking at home ever since. Salute. Good, good work. Good <laughs> yeah, work. Thank you. <laughs> You know, I I enjoy it probably, I, you know, I don't I don't really take bubble baths anymore, but I am still a bath man. We bop bop bop. And uh <laughs> you're also a scat man. <laughs> I uh and but I, what I have gotten into are the bath bombs. Are you aware of bath bombs, Aaron? Oh, my kid loves those too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Get the bath oh, yeah. bombs going. I'm ready to go. Um Bath so, bomb boy, do you so you do take you still take full I still, on baths? I still take full on baths. I've been contemplating actually buying a full on like soaking tub, which is like a basically a personal like uh, swimming pool for our downstairs bathroom. This is uh, something like you you might find in like a Japanese spa or something like that. You know, like the public bath where you can fill it in and it goes up to your neck and all that stuff. The, mm-hmm. So I'll keep it's you updated. Boat. It is. It's very expensive, yeah. which is why I've not gotten in. All right, Aaron, let's talk about what's been going on this week on our YouTube channel, uh, Amigos Retro Gaming. What do we got? It was a, a, a what I would call mega fast week, but we did get a little action mm-hmm. here. Uh, let's talk about, uh, well, well, first of all, let's talk about last week's ARG Presents. Okay, man. Uh, the the, uh, the we, we covered the uh, Watara Supervision. And by the and, and apparently not a popular machine. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> because <laughs> this show tanked. <laughs> but we had a good time doing it. I have to say, I, I never, I never heard of this machine. I, I, and it was all over YouTube. That was surprising to me because I never heard of it. Have you heard of it? I had one of these. I had You're it. You're kidding me, both. I did. You're kidding me. Mm-hmm. Well, what did you think of it? Uh, it was horrible. I had a Tetris <laughs> knockoff. I think it came with it. Yeah. Uh, I had no other titles. Uh, this was I was given to me by my aunt um, 
who, you know, had the best of intentions. She knew I like video games. By the time that I got one of these, I already had a Game Boy. And as you can imagine, somebody that's played the Game Boy, you're yeah. not going to be able to go back to the Watara supervision. It's going to no. be it, it's going to be bad it, times. It's not a lateral move either. No. Uh, the uh, and I, of course now you, I did not get to play a real one, and so I ask you, how was the screen quality, just in general, not the game quality? Because I've heard it was horrible. Well, you know, playing te you know Tetris is is not a very graphically intense game, right? Uh, and so I didn't really notice like a lot of. Um, a, a lot of uh, you know a lot of the issues that you described in ARG presents a lot of the tearing and things like that, uh -huh. but I can tell you by the just the feel of the system you know that when you hold a Game Boy it's got some heft to it it's got some weight uh, yeah. you could brain a man with a Game Boy the Watara Supervision weighed about two ounces it weighed it yeah. you know it weighed as much as a hairbrush yeah, so yeah. you could just tell and it, you know when you went to the Kmart back in the day and you were scanning the shelves of games they weren't yeah. stocked with the Watara Supervision games so I can yeah. tell that this thing was not long for this earth this is one of those th this is one of those things you find the blister packs at like a flea market in the early 90s right and like a, a stacks of the same one mm -hmm. you know they just never sold now, you know we're looking at this video here the uh, you know I, I played this game. It's called uh, Super Kong. I believe was the name of it. Hey, did you know? Doesn't this sprite look like they ripped it directly out of like a like a, a Donkey Kong three well, or something? It does. It looks very Boy similar had. to that, except they gave Kong a tail. What's up with that? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I couldn't figure that out either. Anyway, if you're into the supervision, or you just want to see some insanity, and I will say, Brent really turns loose on his game. I mean, he's got to be the foremost authority on Earth on this game. I loved hearing him talk about the, uh, it was the, the 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 kitchen game, right? No, the kitchen game was mine. Oh, well, he, <laughs> he talks a lot a, about that one, too. He did, but he played oh, this game. At like, he juggler, was a deep, It right? was a deep dive into this game. I mean, he went in deep. I mean, real deep. I don't know what got into him this week. So, if you're into Watara, check us out. Um, just for fun, Boat, I, you know, about a two week two or three weeks ago i did a uh, live stream on twitch of um laser disc games and uh just for no good reason i just released it this way <laughs> i was like ah, people might enjoy this i love laser disc games as you know and so i, I stuck it up there i had a good time i, I will say i had my all-time finest game of vegas battle mm. probably because the only game i've ever bothered not quit immediately uh, and so we, I played that well into Vegas Battle, so I thought that was kind of fun. What is so this that you're playing right now? What is that game? That's called uh, uh, Road War or something like that. It's a. It's, oh, this is the a, anime game, right? With the chick. Well, they're all they're all anime games. <laughs> <laughs> this is one where you get a car. It's a, if you ever played Cobra Command, this is like the car version. I think it's it's called Road War something. Okay. I don't know or something like that. But anyway, it's. We had a lot of fun. Nothing but the uh, nothing but the car or uh, latest games that night. Um, lastly, Bo, you put up uh, another NES playthrough. You want to talk to us about this? Well, they, this is actually my first NES stream. So I did another one last week that I have not yet put up on YouTube. But uh, this was my my very first stream, the inaugural stream with the EverDrive cart. And uh, the first thing that I wanted to play was Monopoly. Uh, I uh, Monopoly has many versions on many different platforms, but the uh, Monopoly for the Nintendo Entertainment System, I believe, is the best version of Monopoly. So I enjoyed playing that. Played Monopoly for a while. Uh, played some Ghosts and Goblins. That was a request from the chat. Then I got out the Zapper because I wanted to try a Zapper game. Yeah. Try that out. Uh, and uh, Track and Field 2, Aaron. Did you ever play Track and Field 2? I have played Track and Field 2, but it's been a long, long time. So track and Field 2 is a real wacky game because that's when they get real crazy with the events. There's fencing, there's kayaking, there's all kinds of wacky stuff. So played some of that and then closed things out with Skater Dive. So this is a, a very lengthy stream. I went over two hours on this thing, um, but it, it's a lot of fun. So if you want to watch me, uh, you know, uh, play some play some NES. Uh, have some chat action, watch a sailboat cross the Atlantic. Uh, you can you can do it all. You know that Monopoly looked awesome. By the it, way, it is. It truly is the best version of the game. So, and you were right. We never ever play it Monopoly that way. We always put money in the middle. The games last four million years. Mm -hmm. We never do auctions. We never do any of that crap. And, yeah. and, and that's the way to do it. Right. The next time I'll know. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Aaron. It's time for this week. Get ready. <laughs>
time for this week's yeah. Amiga News, Aaron. He yeah. is back after yeah. a long hiatus. Oh, uh, did you did you hire Don Bluth and his gang to, to I did, animate I, that? I, That's I did, incredible. I did, I did. So, Aaron, um, we're going to start off. There is, a, do you remember talking about this game uh, a couple uh, weeks? Actually, this has been quite a while ago. Golden I do vaguely Wing, recall Aaron. It. Yeah, I do vaguely recall it. Yeah, Golden Wing. This is, uh, let me open this up in a bigger tab here. Uh, this was a game that we covered long ago, uh, back in 2018, uh, that, uh, that, that uh, made a splash in the Amiga scene. It is back. This is a special deluxe collector's edition of Golden Ooh. Wing. Yeah, yeah. So um, anyway, you can get this thing. This thing is 25 pounds, pretty reasonable. Comes with a professionally produced box. Uh, the disc, an instruction book, badges, and stickers, and a poster, Aaron. So if you were a fan of Goldwing, and I, I don't think that we ever tried this one out, uh, looks pretty cool. Um, you know, this is, uh, this is, and this, of course, comes to us from our buddy Neil over at Indie Retro News. Did you say it comes with badges? Badges and stickers. Badges? Yeah. We don't need you, no stinking badges. You do need badges. the stinking badges. That's the thing. That's You're the right, thing. I like badges. All right. So we got that. Next up, uh, Ten Mark, Ten Minute Amiga Retrocast. He is back, and this is his video on flash memory and IDE SSD drive solutions for the A600 and the A1200. Flash. Now, you know the ID interface. Flash memory is a huge thing um, in the uh, in the Amiga community. You always have the compact flash adapters, the SD adapters for your various systems. I yep. have not yet heard of somebody actually hooking up an SSD to their Amiga. Have you heard of that, Aaron? I have, yeah. Mm, mm. So, but I mean, uh, it, it's not something like I would have done, no. But I mean, if you think about it, like I know people that have put the SSDs in their uh, uh, Xboxes and stuff. I mean, you can do kinds of crazy stuff. I didn't know what kind of performance action you would get, but th this was a pretty good video here. I Doug, Doug did a deep dive on this stuff. Yeah, and he actually has statistics to back up the read and the write speed and stuff like that. So very, you know, once again, Doug never fails to disappoint to bring you, uh, you know, the, the hard statistics on, on stuff like this. So make sure Indeed. you check that out. 10 Minute Amiga Retrocast. Mm -hmm. All right, coming up next, Aaron. How to, this comes to us from Amiga Love. You know Amiga Love, Aaron? Are you familiar with love, his work? I love Amiga Love. In fact, right here on my wall, the little stickers he sent me. Yeah, Isn't that nice? I've, I've actually, I've got an Amiga Love sticker right there on the uh, on my on my PC tower too. So we love Amiga we love, Love. We love Amiga Love. Now, apparently on the numpad on your the Amiga, there are some <clears throat> difficult to remove keycaps. They are called uh -huh. Space Invaders mechanical keycaps. I'm uh -huh. sure they're shaped because they're space. They're shaped sort of like Space Invaders. So, uh, uh, Amiga Love takes you through the best way to remove these things without actually damaging the keycap. <clears throat> Those don't look like they're easy to replace. So, if you uh, are contemplating taking these off for cleaning purposes or something else, uh, make sure you check out this video. You know, I I will tend to use the old. Well, I'll use a small flat-headed screwdriver if I got one available. If that doesn't work. I go and grab me a butter knife and get to work on that sucker. That sounds like That's the, the sketchy tech at work right there. Bam. <laughs> All right, next up. This is a guy that we haven't talked about before. Oh, no, it is. This is a guy that we have talked about. This is Jim. Jim plays games. Most famous oh, yeah. in Amiga's like lore for helping me learn how to play Elite 2. Although yes. this guy has quite the following online. He has yeah. a new Amiga stream up. And uh, he plays a bunch of the, our favorite titles, Aaron. Um, well, not this one. This is some. I think this is Amber Moon. Looks like a where an abomination, was he for the past but, five years, boat? Yeah, um, <laughs> we could use this guy. <laughs> yeah, uh, but he plays some. Uh, he plays a bunch of different games. Uh, you can check it out. Uh, Jim plays games. We approve absolutely. Yes. Yeah, he's a good guy. I believe he replied to us. He's a real nice guy. Yeah. All right, Aaron. Now, here is another cool thing. This is this guy has actually he's taken a vampire, uh, an yeah. Amiga 2000 vampire 60 uh, 6880, and yeah. put it in a battle of speed, raw speed, Aaron, between the Pi 3B plus and the 4 gig Pi 4. Okay, really? So, oh, oh, that's interesting. Now, I how didn't much see this. do you recall how much a vampire costs, Aaron? 
it's uh several hundred dollars or oh, let me say it's probably three or four hundred pounds or euros boat mm. it's up there yeah it's It'll up cost there you. and of yeah. course the the raspberry pi units are much much cheaper so this is sort of a uh you know he goes through and it's not just a burial he doesn't say one is better than the other and you should never use this for anything else he actually this is a very thoughtful look at you know if you're considering getting a vampire would it be worth it for what your needs are, you know, rather than a pie or is a pie just, you know, what, what you want? So I, I was very impressed with sort of the, the, uh, the well-mannered way this video was put together. Again, much like Tenmark, very sort of statistics based. This is Chris Edwards that has done this. Uh, I, think, I don't think that we've done anything from him before, but I was very impressed with the way that this video was put together. So don't leave me hanging. Who won? Well, I'm going to let you watch the video and find what out for yourself. The? Well, what here's are you the doing thing. To me? There is no clear. Uh, there's no clear winner. Uh, is basically, it close? the the pie does some stuff better. The 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 vampire does some stuff better. Here's the thing, man. If you're like uh, if you're an Amiga user like you and I are, you can get yourself a pie one and do all this stuff. Because all that you want to do is play barbarian and cut some guys heads off and play some lotus. Now this get guy there, goes right. into more of like if you're using applications and other weird words like that so you Very can snooty, yeah yeah so anyway check that out if you are so inclined and after the news i've got a little something along those lines oh as yeah well. I, go, I, go I, I, i've been waiting until after the news to introduce that yeah yeah okay now here's a new thing this comes to us from retro radio onyx rich radio it's a very difficult name to it say. It rolls off the tongue. Yeah. Now, Good. this is, they are actually, and I'm trying to get this link to actually pop up here. They have created a zip stick. Are you a fan of the zip stick, Aaron? The zip stick? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. What is, what, is, what, is, what is that? Well, uh, I will tell you. Here we go. This is a... This is a they, oh, the zip, the joystick. The joystick, yeah. I was thinking yeah. zip drive. They have Sorry. opened up pre-orders for a zip stick clone that they are making in-house. This thing has got all the bells and whistles. It's got your That's micro messy. switches. It's got the, the, yeah. the, the, the nine pin out so you can plug it right into the Amiga. The C64. There's all kinds of different options here. Wow, uh, is this a is this a U.S. guy? It's this, I see it's in dollars. I'm stunned. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I, I, you know, it's a good question. I don't know if it automatically shifted to dollars because it detected my location or what. But anyway, it comes with a wide variety of color schemes. Um, the price and, uh, is not bad. Yeah, yeah, and uh, and so I think that twenty bucks is sort of the sweet spot for me when it comes to joysticks. Uh, I will buy almost any stick for 20 bucks. And if you are a fan of the zip stick, I know that there's tons of people that grew up playing with a zip stick. Uh, this is the way to go because you get one that's brand new. That's got nothing, but it's got the genuine Sanwar, uh, you know, parts and, and thing. man, put that, that dirty, this, nasty thing away. That this thing is, is the no way good. to go. The bro. Ergo this stick. This right here. Wicko. They yes. never made a stick better than this. Why do you I'm, think they I, never made one sticks, after that? I know people love these things. They love them. But I mean, is it ergonomic? I don't think so. Look at that. Look at that grip. Look at that. Feel of the feel of that. It's a uh, El El Cantara, I believe, is what that's called. It's rich Corinthian rubber. <laughs> <laughs> Next up, Aaron. This is a story that had to be explained to me from Rushi. <laughs> okay, okay, I gotta hear this now. Yeah. Unfortunately, because of the way that my um, there we go. Uh, so. Scorpion, okay. Scorpion is a development engine for the Amiga. Okay. Okay. And up until this point, you could not use the A1000 to develop on it, but now you can. The A1000 is officially supported. Okay. Amiga 1000 development machine. Yeah. So this is I the this it. is a Windows based editor for the Amiga that does support the Amiga 1000. Uh, if you are interested in learning more about this, you can check out the Scorpion Engine for Amiga Facebook page. Uh, their latest, their latest edition is actually called Amigo the Fox, and there he is. He's a he's oh, a, yes. he's a I fox. Oh yeah, I did see this video. Yeah. yeah, yeah, he's a fox. All right, and finally, uh, LGR Clint. His friends know him as. Uh, every once in a while, he does some Amiga stuff. He's not, you know, I wouldn't call him heavy into the Amiga scene, but he's done some things. But it's time for him to go through the gauntlet, to run the gauntlet, and build his own checkmate. He's got a checkmate. Apparently, Stephen Jones sent him all of the stuff for free. 
because you know he's well, yeah, LDR. Good move. Yeah, and uh, and he he builds one of these things. Uh, I have not watched this yet. Have you had a chance to watch this one yet, Aaron? I watched about I watched about a third of it, or about a, maybe uh, almost half, uh, and uh, got called away. Uh, but uh, um, I, I suspect it will go in. Clint's pretty good hand. I'd say he won't have too much trouble getting this thing put together. It is quite a. It could get wacky, you mm-hmm. know. Uh, but uh, uh, I'm sure he could probably botch it together. Hey, it, it'll. Uh, yeah, the funny thing, I was watching the beginning of this, and Clint just matter of factly is like, you know, luckily I've got this old beat up. I had this in a drawer. It's a PAL Amiga 1200. Oh, and I had this 030 accelerator sitting around. <laughs> I'm like, man, I wish I had that kind of jack. He lives in a different have, world. Uh, no, a different kidding. world. I just had an 060 sitting around <laughs> and a bunch of money, you know. But uh, he's got all the stuff he needs, and I'm sure I'll, I'll go to fish watch this this evening, but I'm sure to go in fine. It looks like it's going out well so far. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, Aaron. Now it's time for your big news. He's well, actually, one not more, the only person to uh, one more little item before we move on. And I don't think you have it linked, but uh, Dan from Retro, uh, for you know Dan of Ravi and Dan, yeah, uh, put up a video today uh, about installing a new sixty-eight sixty um, accelerator board uh, in his twelve hundred. Uh, this is quite a uh, a card. Uh, this thing is a, a it, it's a it's a and much like LGR. They sent this to Dan. They sent Dan the one with the processor already in it because you can't find these processors anywhere. And everything I've read, the sixty eight sixties, there's about eight million fake ones out there. Yeah, that stink. right, so, right. And I don't know how much these things cost. Maybe somebody to check and fill me in on what a sixty eight sixty costs these days. But I'm guessing that it costs pretty good dough. Uh, this thing has. Uh, um, a USB port. It's got a, a slot for a scan doubler. It's got a SD card support. It's got Wi-Fi. It comes with a Wi-Fi antenna. Uh, a crap load of RAM. It's got that. It's got a big fan that locks onto the top of wow. it. Wow, it's wide. like a, it's like a modern PC deal. Yeah, it's got a, it's got a bunch of crap that it, it, it clogs into it. Uh, the 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 uh, the funny thing is to use it it's also got eight it's got a a, a dip ports that come out the back you know uh, i think it's got hdmi and uh, uh usb ports that you mount in the back and they have everything like printed up you know 3d printed but the funny thing is when dan goes to use it you ha- it's, it requires like literally like three monitors because of the different modes the amiga goes into and right now it doesn't support a scan doubler uh because so, they're going to make their own scan doubler to go on this board but it's not out yet so it's much like the Coco. You have to have a couple monitors standing by to have this thing hooked up to when the Amiga ships into these different modes. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. Uh, also, the apparently the uh, uh, some of the like the Wi-Fi doesn't work on it yet. It's one of those deals where they're developing it sort of as it goes. Mm-hmm. You know that shtick. Yeah, uh, I but think, they're not, they're I not think, pricing it as it goes. I'm sure you're going to pay full no, price I, no matter where they are in the development said, cycle. I believe that Dan says it costs 550 euros. <sighs> And Boy. that's not including the chip. Now his they gave him the chip, but the sixty eight sixty. And again, I don't know what that's going to cost you, uh, but it, it's it's uh, big money. Uh, but uh, so if you're into like a uh, high powered, I mean, it plays MP3s through the command line. <laughs> he plays <laughs> he plays Quake on it. You know, I was. It's funny because you were talking about that thing with the pie and stuff, and I was just thinking to myself, I was like, uh, we really. Uh, we, you really, I was watching this video thinking to myself, this is madness. I really, I really was. The fact that you'd pay, you know, 700, and that's like counting the scan dub, where you're probably going to have a grand invested into this thing. You know, I don't, I, if you've got the money and you just want to be King Dong of the 1200, I mean, I guess you could do it, but I mean, that's a lot of money. It is. You know, it, but I mean, it's a, it's a, it's listen, a man, part, hear me know? now and believe me later. We're talking about the Amiga. Mm-hmm. And if there's one thing that we've learned in five years of doing the Amigos podcast is that money is no object to anybody that's a fan of this platform. It's an object to me. Well, <laughs> it's a lot of money. And you're, so you're, we were, you're an outlier. It was seamlessly melted to my little segment here. <laughs> I went Which back is, and forth for weeks. Should I spend a hundred bucks on this EverDrive cart for the NES? You know. Yeah. So I uh, uh, just to just to close the news with some personal news. Uh, and I'm doing a. I'll be gonna put. I'm gonna put together a full video on this, but I figured I'd mention it on the show what's fresh in my mind. Uh, when Bo was in Ireland, and I've talked about this before, I got very sad because I didn't get to go to Ireland, and so I to to uh, 
to make myself feel better, I bought an Unamiga. I happened to be Johnny on the spot because me, we were watching you in the in, in Ireland in the doing your live stream when that thing went. Yeah, when it went for sale, mm -hmm. the pre-orders like, and I was like, whoa, and ten marks, like you got to get this thing. And I, so me and me and Doug and a few other people bought uh, uh, some Unamigas. I think they were like um, uh, hundred and thirty-five bucks or something mm -hmm. like that it was it was not that bad you yeah know? yeah and for those that don't know what it is it's a it's a header that it basically you take you the motherboard out of a amiga 500 and this thing fits in there with the ports that stick out the back and you and it's a fpga and it which basically simulates a 6820 with a bunch of memory you know blah 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 it's got a it's got an enhanced sound it's got a, a vga out you know, it's got a PS2 ports for the mouse and keyboard if you want to use them, and you can use your Amiga keyboard. All right, so it's got an SD card. You know, blah. So then the Corona thing hit, and this thing never showed up for months and months. So finally, Doug got his a couple weeks ago, and me and Doug were to get together to do a video. Well, mine never showed up, mm -hmm. and I waited and waited and waited. I was, waited. I was concerned. Yeah. Yeah. So finally, I come in the house uh, from work Wednesday. Bam! It's here. All right. I'm like, oh, here we go. You know. So I had the old. House 500, the old House 500 here, but we I've beat this thing, I've cut it, it's ugly, you know, but I thought this is the perfect prime candidate for this thing. So I stuck it in there. <clears throat> so uh, um, there was no instructions, as usual, but yeah. there was a PDF you could get, and the PDF was for the last version. But So I downloaded, I got it, read it. It's simple, stick it in, right? It, oh, it, the power, it's powered by a uh, phone charger, you know, that USB, so no more power supply, you know, you know, so, so put the thing in, it came with an SD card, put it together, fired it up, bam, come right up, everything on the screen blue, mm. light blue hue mm. over the screen. So I called all the people that had these, and I'm like, did this do this for you? No, there's no footage of this, by the way, forget it. There's, there can't be more than 100 of these on Earth, okay, maybe 50, all right. So, I contacted the guy that made it. He said, "Listen, he goes, he goes. I looked at your pictures. He goes, oh, you got the wrong re uh, resistors on that thing. What? I'm like, what do you mean? Yeah, hold on, it gets better. He goes, you got four resistors on there that are that are. It said they're they're they should be 75 ohm resistors. Well, they weren't. They were 75 kilo ohms. That's hmm. a ton more. Okay? Yeah. I'm like, you're kidding me. How did you make? How did that mistake happen? <laughs> no one knows, right? So I asked. So I'll go to. I said, listen, I'm going to go and find some of these." resistors to put on here and I, I sourced some and I knew I had my belly I'm like this is not going to work so I put the resistors on there just like he said it didn't it didn't change a thing all right so I, I talked to Doug I'm like Doug what does yours have on it well his has 75k resistors you know the ones he said was wrong I'm like so I had mentioned to this guy that the, the, there's a chip on the back of this thing it's a square chip with the tons and tons of little pins very small you can't do anything with it right it was it's video DAC. It's a video chip. And I looked at this thing, and it was cockeyed. And I thought to myself, I told the guy, I'm like, listen, are you sure this chip's not cockeyed and the, it's got problems with the pins? No, no, no. It, uh, you know it was that. It's not that. So I ignored him because my choices were to give up or send this back to Spain, right? And it took for a month to get it here. Yeah. You know? And you yeah. know how the mail is right now. Mm -hmm. So I had an air knife and a bunch of, industrial flux that I took from Lexmark when I left. So I flux that sucker up and re <laughs> and went to and got the air and I, and I reheated up that chip mm -hmm. and slid those pins around. And when one of my old tricks was I pushed down on the chip and heated it up with an air knife, cleaned it up, stuck it in, and it worked. It, that fixed it. Wow. Right? So it was bad. So what are the odds that I could even have the equipment and the skills yeah. to do this? Yeah, I mean, I'm you totally bragging. got lucky. I'm just saying, I'm just saying, what are the odds? And I, and the funny thing is, this is the, the the stinger to this is that my all these boards you can have a name put on your board. Well, I was like, you know, I'm not going to put no name on this board. It's a, it's just a board. I don't mm -hmm. care. So as I'm looking at this thing, Doug had sent me a message. It kept ringing in my head. My name was the number, the very first name on this board's my name. Wow. Got all, everyone that buy, no no, I don't want my name on a crap board. You know what I'm saying? That's why I didn't want my name on it in the first place. Because what if it's a piece of garbage? I don't want my name on that. Are you calling it now, a crap board? 
what I didn't know if it was gonna be crap or not. I don't want my name on something that I don't have a hand in. You know what I mean? That's why I didn't want my name. I on want it. my name on everything. Well, not me. So anyway, all that said, and I will say the guy got back to me quick. You know, but there was nothing he could have done about this. He's got some manufacturing issues over there in Spain or wherever he got this thing done. All that said, now I've got it hooked up in the in the one th- in the five hundred here, and the board is great. It's great. So far, I've loved it. It's it's the it's made perfectly for you. It's very much like the Coco. He put a, a front end on it with all the games. That's all I ever play. It works great. And I'm doing a video on it, uh, but the uh, much like every other, you know, uh, uh, boutique low run Amiga board or any computer board, you better if you're going to buy something like this, you better you better. Watch what you're doing because stuff like this could happen. You could get screwed real easy. I mean, that was an easy screwing right there. If I hadn't got the chance to get in there and fix it, so I'm what are the chances? Video. What are the chances that you know an Unamiga board went to a former employee? You know where your job was basically to solder electronical components into place at a very very high level. You just happen to have the equipment to do you know the job. Very, that's, that's, very fortunate yeah. on your part, but I mean, I feel bad for all the people that don't have that equipment. They were just screwed, you know? Well, hopefully, I don't know how these, you know, I'm a manufacturing guy for PCBs, as you know, mm-hmm. obviously. Yeah. So I looked at this board, and it looked good. And that's the only chip I saw that looked cockeyed. Everything else looked pretty solid. But it worries me when you put 75K chips where 75 ohm chips should go. I wonder if that was just something to shut me up. I don't. I, I, that concerns me because that's a that's a level of a screw up. It's unbelievable. Any the chip being loose, the pins that could happen. It, it happens, but uh, uh, putting the wrong so, uh, resistors on is is bad. So anyway, I'm gonna I'm gonna do, give this thing a full workup. The main problem I'm having now is actually capturing footage from it because it sends footage out in a real weird way. Mm. But my first impressions, having played with it for a, a ton in the past few days after I fixed it. It's it's great. It's great. I Good really enjoy it. Good to hear, yeah. man. All right. Well, I think that that's going to wrap up all the Amiga news for this week. So it's time to jump into this week's game. Let's talk about Bubble Bobble, Aaron. Yes, sir. Bubble Bobble. The uh, the game, the song that's etched into my brain that I couldn't carve it out of there with with a with a with a knife. I've heard this song so much mm-hmm. in the past <laughs> a couple weeks. So. Bubble Bob, when I released in 89, but you know I like to do on a game like this. Let's go way back here and have a look at the arcade version uh, of this before we get deeply into the Amiga version. So uh, the arcade version, this, of course, put out by Tato amongst many of their wacky, what would you call the series of games they did? Just wacky Tato games. They were the, they were the masters of them, uh, of these sorts of games. This was released uh, in the arcades in 86 in Japan and North America. I'm guessing Europe got about the same time. Uh, the uh, uh, It was super popular. It spawned a million games, and it got ported to a million systems. I mean, it's everywhere. Everything from the NES, you know, all the 8-bits, all the portables. I'd, and you'd be hard-pressed to find the Watama did not get a port. It's the only <laughs> one I could think of, or the Watar or whatever. Uh, so it got ported everywhere. So it was no no small task to... Uh, it was not what I would call a difficult game from a graphical perspective to, to move around. But the play style is the thing. So anyway, this got released on the Amiga in 89. And this was developed by Software Creations. Um, I don't know if we've done... Yeah, we have done one or two of theirs. They did a game called... Uh, they did Bionic Commando, Gauntlet 3... Uh, Ghouls and Ghosts, Jet Set Willy 2. Uh, they did Renegade and Sly Spy on the Amiga. So it's funny, some of these I didn't know were even on the Amiga. Now, I mean, Jet Set Willy 2, I've never tried that one, mm. but. Um, coded by a fellow named David J. Broadhurst. Uh, he did uh, several of the ones I just mentioned. And also, he did Assassin, uh, Dojo really? Dan. For uh, yeah, Team Do- 17, huh? Yeah. Dojo Dan, which was horrible. Uh, <laughs> Ghouls and Ghosts. Well, uh, the graphics were done by a fellow named Andrew uh, uh, Thre- uh, Threlfall. He also did Bonnet Command, LED Storm, Sly Spy. And the music by the uh, king of music, or one of the kings. Rimble? The, the David Whitaker. Whitaker, uh, yeah. Of the, of the games, it's funny, he's done a lot of games music that we've did, but let me just yeah, read well, this. Well, I mean, it's, it's worth funny. noting that David Whitaker did not compose this theme. He just Right, right, oh, yeah, absolutely, music. yeah, yeah. 
So get this, Bo. He's done music for some of our perennial favorites, including one that's funny when you played it. He did the music for Fright Night, mm -hmm. one of our favorites. Yep. Golden Axe. He, he did the Gooch Cricket music. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. One? Yeah. He did uh, Lemmings 2. He did Xenon 2. He did tons more, but he also did Thundercats. So okay. <laughs> there you go. So it's apropos that you would play that. Yeah. Uh, again, I'm not going to go through every system that's released on. Just think of a system and then say yes to yourself because it was released on everything. So, Bo, now, I know the generalization of gameplay, but this is much more your line of uh, of play. So give people a rundown. What's the gameplay in this exactly? Okay, so this is a single screen platforming game, much in the vein of uh, Mario Brothers, Donkey Kong, Mr. Do. Um, and in this game, you play a dinosaur. Uh, they are enemies that are trying to kill you. And your main offensive weapon is blowing bubbles. So when you blow a bubble, the bubble sticks around on the screen, whether it envelops an enemy or not. But when you blow a bubble and it does envelop an enemy, they float in that bubble uh, until you pop it. Now, if you wait too long to pop the bubble, then the enemy will just break free. Uh, the, to progress through the stages, what you have to do is you have to destroy all the enemies by enveloping them in a bubble and then popping their bubble. That is the, uh, that is the long and short of Bubble Bobble. So every stage uh, introduces uh, different types of enemies. Uh, there are different platforms that you uh, can jump and run across, uh, and uh, they're very geometrically designed. And the thing about Bubble Bobble that kind of makes it famous is that there are a wide variety of pickups. Uh, this game uh, yeah. is, is sort of the precursor to Zool in terms of the wide variety it's of pickups that there are. It's not nearly that bad. Uh, <laughs> I played Zool this week. Every, it's the worst. Every, uh, you know, there, there are tons and tons of fruits that you can pick up for varying amounts of points. Uh, there are uh, candy canes, otherwise known as the Shepherd's Crook. Uh, there are beakers of liquid. Uh, there are diamonds, uh, different sorts of pies, uh, very appetizing. Every all of this, all of the sprite design in this game is very good. Um, I it sort of makes your mouth water as you're picking up these things, except, um, for, the, except for the jewels. And I think there's some geodes or something. There's some like jewels sticking out of a rock. That's all those geodes? birthday cake. Okay, you know, you know what a geode? I know is. what a geode is. I didn't see any geodes. Well, I mean, they're they're not geodes, but it's 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 like a piece. It's like a rock with some cool looking stuff shooting out that looks sort of like diamonds. Yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, uh, the way this is a score and level based game, uh, you can choose to either go for score or go for levels. Uh, there are pickups that you can pick up. If you pick up an umbrella, you can skip multiple levels. If you're going for, if you play this game for score, you don't want to do that because the levels get harder and harder. Uh, and if you skip ahead, you're just missing out on chances to get a bigger score. The genius in this game lies in how to dispatch your enemies. So there are multiple ways that you can kill them. You can line up bubble chains and kill them. There are certain power-ups. There's a cross power-up. When you get it, it sends down bolts of lightning to destroy the enemies. You can chain enemies together and kill them, and then that gives you more points. Uh, but the, the, the main thing in this game that gives you points are those beakers. Whenever a beaker appears that is filled with a liquid, if you pick that up, all of the enemies disappear from the screen and you enter a bonus round where you have to pick up uh, all of the items on the screen. If you do that, you get 100,000 points. That is an insane amount of points in this game uh, compared to everything else that you get. And so uh, the, the key to this game in getting a high score is to maximize the, the total number of these bonus rounds that you get. Uh, there are other things too. There's a, a bubble. Bubbles will float down or float up from the bottom of the screen uh, that spell letters. And if you spell extend, uh, you get an extra life. I think that's right. I was never actually sure what you got when you spelled extend because I didn't do it very often. I'm pretty sure I'll you get an extra it. life. Um, you can... Um, and another thing is you sometimes bubbles will float up that are full of water, half full of water. And if you uh, pop one of those, a waterfall will rush down the, uh, the the platforms on the screen and kill all of the enemies in its path. Uh, I call those the liquid kid bubbles. Yeah, that's exactly absolutely. what you do with liquid kid. Absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, uh, Pixels at Dawn does confirm that it is an extra life when you spell extend. Um, this game, you start out with, I think, four lives uh, and uh, and... 
when you uh, when you die, you die, and you can continue uh, at the same level, but your score resets. You get eight credits to start out in this game. So um, that is basically the gameplay, the long and short of the gameplay. Oh, it is a two-player simultaneous game too. So you yeah. can both of your Bub and Bob are the names of the dinosaurs. I don't. I don't play. I think me and you have even done it two player. And but I don't two players. I have enough trouble with one person. I, you know, this is a game uh, is beloved. It's just like every system. Every everyone loves this game. Uh, and and I will say, as far as a, I've played the arcade version of this. Game. In fact, I played it some this week just to compare it. And they they did an excellent job uh, converting this over. Uh, the Amiga version is is quite good. Uh, that much said, I know this is a game that just never did it for me in the arcade. Uh, it's 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 sort of, and maybe it's just me, but but to me, it's a kind of an abstract sort of game. It just stuff just going on everywhere. It's hard for me. I've never been able to develop a, a sound strategy to. Well, to here's the well thing. This, this game. game is the next generation of kind of one screen platformers. In fact, it's probably the last generation of the one screen platformers because after you know this game came out in '86, games were already starting to move away. From from this 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 gameplay format, um, it is more complex than a Donkey Kong or a Mr. Do or a Dig Dug, just because there is so much stuff going on. And I can understand how that's a turnoff because a lot of people come to single screen platformers because there's a well defined goal. You know what you need to do, and you know how you need to do it. I'm not saying yeah. that this game is great and that it, it has no problems. I will say that this game is great. I do think it's a great game, but uh, it definitely <laughs> it definitely, it definitely, has problems. Uh, but it is sort of, I would call it the pinnacle of the, the single screen platformer. Um, I think after 86, most games moved away from this model and you, you didn't really see it anymore, so. Well, obviously I'm gonna disagree with you on that, but I mean, I think you're right. I, I agree with everything you said with the pinnacle part, because. I think every other game you mentioned. Well, wait, no, no, game, I'm I talking like, about like the, I'm talking about the pinnacle in terms of complexity, not the pinnacle oh, in terms yeah. of actually well, I mean, being it, good. It's so it's, uh, you know, I've played this many times, and and it is there's just so much. The board to set up in a way, and the the guys move in a way. It doesn't look hard when you watch it. That's what irritates me about this game. If you watch someone play Mister Do. And you see all the crap going on, you're like, my God, this guy's screwed. But this game doesn't, you look at it, you're like, oh, this doesn't look too bad, shit with bubbles. It even starts off, you're like, oh, this is easy. And then after that, it just gets, it's maddening. You know, it, it drives me bananas. But that much said, it is fun. I do like it. I do like the tune. The music in this is perfectly fine. Uh, it sounds, uh, uh, in fact, it's, I would say it's iconic. Uh, and you better, you better like it because you're going to hear it a lot. Uh, but I would like to have had more tunes, but I mean they just did what the arcade did, so I'm mm -hmm. not going to fault them for that. Uh, again, we've played two players at this, and it was it played fine. Uh, I did notice it's funny now that I this is one of the first games I played on the Unamiga, <clears throat> and I thought this was interesting, Boat, uh, because I did, I'm guessing did you, you did you emulate this? I'm assuming you did. Yeah, did you I, put emu one? I, I I emulated this 100 yeah. percent of the time. Yeah, yeah. Uh, when I played this on the Amiga, uh, it on the which was set up to sixty eight twenty, it ran really fast, mm -hmm. and I was like, to, and I wondered if it did that. Well, you've got uh, to you've got to set up the emulator to not make it run fast because right, you, right. You, you can well, play this, and there are actually there's a corrected a twelve hundred ADF that you can get. Yeah, that yeah. Uh, that 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 fixes the speed issue. That's sure. where I was going. That's mm -hmm. exactly where I was going. So I'd never heard of that until I fooled with it on the Amiga. But it was it was still interesting. Uh, but uh, and by the way, t uh, twice as fast this, you're boned. Yeah, there's a zero percent chance. Yeah, that you could yeah. do well. <laughs> you mentioned that picking up the uh, thing that would shoot you forward in levels. Mm -hmm. I had this great game of this going great for me. And I thought to myself, this is the one. This is the one I'm going to enter in the um, Amigos High Score Challenge. And something happened, and I could not, and the game stopped to a point where I couldn't actually, I couldn't get out of where I was at, and the game wouldn't end. Mm. There was nothing I could do. I don't know if that's, and I asked people, I was on chat, I'm like, what do you do here? It just, it, there was no time, there was no nothing. I just, I couldn't move, and the enemies would never come to me. So apparently that's a thing, you know. Uh, and by the way, my best score was still garbage. The whole thing you said about getting moving forward in levels, whether you, that's no good. If you stink, you can forget getting points because you're right. I went forward like a bunch of levels. I didn't know what was happening, and then I got I just got smashed. It was yeah. so hard. Yeah. You know this game get the difficulty. I wouldn't say it ramps up too bad, but if you skip ahead, it ramps up too bad. Then you're boned. Mm -hmm. uh, the uh, 
it's funny. I can't, like this game is a little bit like Mister. I think anyway. You could you could stop me if I'm wrong. You know, in Mister. Do occasionally a diamond will show up, and it's worth the big points, right? Yeah. You know what I'm saying, or, or you get an extra man. This game must have something similar to that because I picked up a thing. And it got me a ton of points. Well, it, it, it yeah, I mean, the, the, the big point drops in this game don't have, they happen a lot more often than the diamonds in Mr. Do, which, I mean, that's like an almost never occurrence. And there are ways that you can, one of the things that's interesting about this game, and of course, we'll never know about the Amiga version because of, you know, it's it's a support, but the, uh, the the verse the arcade version is that there is nothing random about the game like there are certain things that you can do to trigger various events a lot of things have to do with the amount of bubbles that you blow in a particular round or how you kill certain enemies will trigger certain high point things and the best players at this game just like the best players in every arcade game have learned how to maximize those drops for the big points you know if you're watching the video versus this is the screen where i got stuck this is it right here I went down one of those long tunnels there, and I couldn't get out, and nothing would kill me. It was the darndest thing. Um, my thoughts, I, I don't have, I, don't, I will say, I don't see any flaws in this game. I will say that. It's not my cup of tea, but obviously it's a, it's a good game. I think it's a, I think it's a tremendous port. I mean, I like it. I don't, I don't think there's anything wrong with it at all. Do you? I mean, do you, did you see anything in it that you didn't like? Every, it controlled this, this well. Is, it's this is probably, players. I mean, this is one of the best. This is yeah. one of the best. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's all... We, there's not a whole lot of reason to go in on and on about it. It's just it, if you've played it in the arcade, this is the pretty much the same game you're going to play here. It moves well, it plays well. We've mentioned the uh, A1200 issue, which they you know you can get a fix for that. Uh, the enemies, I think, are I will say it's very touchy, which the arcades the same way about. I mean, if you get anywhere near an enemy, you're boned. You know, I, I thought I mean, the, it, some games will give you a little like in Donkey Kong, the barrel can be barely touching you for example and you can get away in this game the second you come with on a pixel of the other guy you're dead and that so that makes it kind of tough uh, but uh, i can't think of any other bad stuff about it at all i, I thought it was a, a a pretty good game you got anything to close it with yeah i mean the, there are a couple problems that i have with this game one is that oh, okay. your your spawn position with down there in the corner of the screen sometimes you spawn and you just die immediately because there's tons of enemies swarming around you um another thing that i don't like is the way that the platforms are like sometimes it's not clear what you can jump on and what you can't what is a you know wall and what you can't um it is tough to get the rhythm or the it's tough to uh the way the jumping works it is bizarre like you could get stuck in air, you could jump up to an area, but the only way you could get back down is to fall off the area. Like when you're trying to retrieve fruit, you have to, it's a certain mindset you have to get into to get to places. Does that mean you know what I'm saying, Bo? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, I think that the uh, the enemies are weird. Like they move erratically. They don't all like like sometimes they just sort of do their own thing. Um, it. I don't know. I felt like. I felt like everything was just sort of, I don't know. It it seems to me that in this this was like, and there were sequels of this game. There were tons of sequels. Yeah. Uh, there's there's I couldn't believe it. You know, there's Bubble Bobble two and three. There's also Rainbow Islands. There's a game called Bubble Symphony. Uh, these games all came out after Bubble Bobble, but. Um, you know, by the time 86, I think, I'm pretty sure Double Dragon came out 86 or 87 or something like that. And the whole industry was moving towards, you know, the beat em up genre, the scrolling genre. Uh, arcade games had just moved on. Now, I'm not saying that these, these things didn't, they didn't sell, but they weren't the big blockbusters that they had been up to this point. That's the, that's, that's the, that's the key. And it's really hard. I mean, I think that the the, the folks at at, at uh, Taito were they were hamstrung because they had a big hit with Bubble Bobble and they wanted to improve upon it, but they saw which way the wind was blowing in terms of like what the hot best selling arcade games were, and maybe they didn't get quite the crack team of designers that designed the original Bubble Bobble to design the sequels, because from all accounts the 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 second and third games were just not as good, even though you know obviously they were sequels and they should have been. So, um, that's, I feel like this game is like 90% of an all time classic. Uh, it's got, it does so many things well, but there are, there are a lot of things that just aggravate me. The biggest thing that aggravates me is the random nature of the game. You know, uh, that if you don't get those beakers, 
you're screwed. You will not get a high score. That is the only way that you can get the amount of points necessary to get a high score in this game is to just luck in to getting two or three beakers. Because that's if you get three beakers, that's 300,000 points. You have to play like 20 stages to get 300,000 points ordinarily in playing the game. The game is way too unbalanced in terms of the scoring. Yes, um, and, and the arcade score is about the same. You feel, I mean, oh yeah, it's exactly the same. Yeah. It's exactly the same. Yeah, the scoring is. I mean, that does seem odd to me, you know. But I mean, I, I will say that there. This is not something that was not that you didn't see a lot in games of this era, though. I mean, you did see gross scoring uh, differences because of luck. I mean, and we we mentioned. I mean. Uh, uh, it, when when a real rare event would occur, you know. So I mean, it's not I'm not saying it happened every day, but it, it, you, I've seen games that were had a similar, you know, just like just like we were talking with Mister Do, uh, that but that diamond coming up every once in a while that can you know dramatically affect your overall score when the thing yeah. comes down. Now here's so. here's here's something that that um that uh that Rafi brings up in the chat, Mister Reflection. Um, a lot of people didn't play Bubble Bobble for a score. This game is different than a lot of single screen platformers because it has 99 different levels. Donkey Kong, Mr. Dude, Dig Dug. You didn't get, I mean, Donkey Kong has what, five levels? Is that right? Yeah, four. Four? Okay. So this game, you know, it, maybe it wasn't such a bad thing that the scoring was random because maybe you're, you're as, a, as a game player, you were just trying to see what you know. You're trying to get as far as you could in the levels itself, and I can. Ex I mean, I can accept that that play style. I yeah. think if it is like that, though, you shouldn't have a high score table. You should have like a highest level table attained at the end of the game or something like that. So you know, uh, I yeah, uh, we, me and the boy are playing a lot of the of uh, Warblade on the PC. Mm -hmm. The uh, we, we talked about it a couple weeks ago. It's, it's the same guy, the Deluxe Galaga. And it's another game that has you'll, these random events that can, if you get a uh, one of the pickups in that, put you in a meteor storm. And if you get to the meteor storm, you get like a million points. Mm -hmm. And to get to a million points is nigh impossible. And that's my kid's got the high score because he made it to the meteor storm. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't like, you're right. I've never played this for points until we, the high score thing. And uh, I don't like it for that. <laughs> mm -hmm. it, it would. It, I mean, also I suck at it, but it, I can see your point for sure. Uh, you know. You just, you know, it, it just depends on, um, it, it. it's like everything, you know, some people like to play for points, some people like to play for levels, and it's, you know, it, it, one is not better than the other one, it's just, it's just how, you, what gets you the most enjoyment out of the game, and, um, but I, I do think that this is not going to be a game that people will play, you know, to demonstrate the ultimate video game player of all time because of the randomness of the scoring, so. And I, I will say, I, I do, I, I've mentioned this many times, because a lot of the games, I, I like a game like the same guys did, like uh, uh, Liquid Kids, where it's it's actually multi-screen and you it's got sort of an, an adventure and an ending. Mm -hmm. These this game is uh, it, it also just kind of repetitive for me, and I'll and the, and I do get sick of the song. I mean, I really oh, yeah. I like, you, gotta, you, I like gotta, the song. you turn off the music at some point for sure. Yeah, I mean, at first you're like, oh, here we go, and then mm -hmm. you at, you know, then you're like, oh God, kill me. Um, this guy, of course, as you can imagine, uh, Boatster, it did very well. Uh, review wise, uh, it got a uh, lemon score of 8.47, uh, which is pretty high. Amiga Action gave this a 90. Amiga Computing gave it a 91. Amiga Power, 4 out of 5. Amiga Power, uh, 87. And Commodore User, 7 out of 10. I'm surprised by those. Uh, see you, Amiga, 84. And your Amiga, 54. What? I don't know what was going on there? Wow. Uh, now, all that said, uh, some of these people may just not like the arcade game. That's the only thing I can think of. If you don't like the arcade game of Bobo, Bo, you're not going to like this. Um, I did look this up on eBay, Boat. And by the way, we should mention, of course, Bubble Bob was, as I mentioned, it came out, uh, and it was on the OCS. Uh, they actually released, I didn't even know this until I was looking on eBay, Boat. There's a CD32 Bubble Bobble Trilogy. Did you know that? I did not know that. Interesting. Yeah, I, 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 did, I didn't look into it because I thought maybe one of these days we might cover it, so I didn't look into it too closely. Uh, ironically, it's the cheapest thing you can get. It's I found it for sale for the CD32 for twelve bucks. Uh, I found the uh, some of the re-releases for this going in the UK, and they're selling for about forty bucks. I mean, that's wow. a, that's a straight up sale. Someone just sold the disc only of the of the non uh, Hit Squad version for twenty five bucks, and I saw these going for over thirty dollars, quite a bit. So you would think I was surprised because you'd think this was a big seller. 
uh, there'd be a lot of them out there, but apparently well, it's Well, I mean, in, it's yeah. a big seller, but it's also a perennial favorite, and so that's yeah, going to drive right, the man. price up. You're right, man. So, But I, I, I enjoyed it. I will say, uh, one thing about a game like this is you could th- you, you toss it on real quick, play it, you know, it's much like a much like a Donk Dong or Mr. Do. It's a it's a nice quick. I've got ten minutes to kill sort of game. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we got some Discord reviews on this one, Aaron. Uh, Jason Warrens was the first to clock in. He said, "Fantastic, nine out of ten. Paul, aka Hermsky, writes a Herm firm bubble bursting nine out of ten. A superb game that stood its time porting over from eight bits to the Amiga." Creating a game with so many levels and interesting pickups to help you up on your travels. How you play the game will determine whether you're playing for a high score or pushing through levels for completion. Bubble Bobble is a quick, quirky, addictive game that will either get you thumping the desk or jumping for joy. Either way, it's great entertainment. The game is even better when played in two-player mode, choosing to work as a team or against each other. Overall, a very playable game with many variations of play. Lord Soup writes... Like pizza, it's popular for all the right reasons. Nine out of ten. I concur. Frodo, that, was very, that was concise for Lord Sue. Yeah. Frodo and L writes, One of the easiest games to review since it's a near-perfect game, perfectly emulated, 9.5 out of 10. And finally, Pixels at Dawn writes, I've played Bubble Bubble on every computer system I've owned in one way or another, but the Amiga version is my favorite. While it may not be a direct port of the arcade original behind the scenes, it is close, and more importantly, it's fun and hellishly addictive. Not only that, it has lovely graphics and a soundtrack that I can hear over and over again without getting bored of it. A Stone Cold Classic 9 out of 10. You know, you, one thing you failed to mention, both, and I can't believe it, is how colorful this game is, but you love that. I do. This had colors coming to. It well, I talked about. I talked about the pl- the pickups. You know, there was a a phrase that Steve Jobs used when the iPhone launched to describe the icons. He called them lickable icons. And I think yeah. the, the pickups, everything in this game is very lickable, including the dinosaurs. That may be the first thing Jobs said that I endorse. I like that. <laughs> so, um, anyway, uh, that was Bubble Bobble, and we would be remiss if we didn't talk about the Amigos high score challenge on Bubble Bobble. Yes. The, the day of reckoning has finally arrived, Aaron, and we are going to yeah, look... Yeah, this was heated. There was a lot of action on this. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we have uh, in first place, we'll count down from third to, third to first, okay? Uh, with a score of uh, 466,230, Chris Folds. Chris Folds, congratulations. With a score of 485,550. Gaz J82, Gary James, and finally, with a score of 763,000, unbelievable 400, Retro Algae. Uh, congratulations, Amazing. guys. I think uh, the score I turned in was like 23 grand, and on the game I lost, it was only 100 grand, and so I wouldn't even have made the top 20 on this, probably. Yeah. Brutal. Uh, it, is, it is a uh, very crazy uh, uh thing here now uh we should uh oh aaron did you you didn't turn in your score you didn't put yeah, your, I did. you didn't put it I, on the spreadsheet I, I put a screen side. oh i didn't put it on here no you, i didn't do that oh. it was too embarrassing but I, it was it was 23 grand okay I can tell you that right well now. You, you you were 16th dead last uh i ended up uh eighth with uh 283,000. so uh this is a real fun thing we i really enjoy this i played bubble bubble a ton thanks to this challenge we want to thank paul aka hermsky for uh, being our high score chief on the Amigos. If you are a member of our Discord community by supporting us on Patreon, uh, you can take part in the Amigos high score challenge. We would love to have you. Um, And uh, we should announce next week's high score challenge, or I'm sorry, next month's high score challenge, because it runs for the full month. We will Mm -hmm. be playing California games, Aaron. How's this going to work, Boat, exactly? Well, it's going to work like this. There are six events in California games. You're going to record your best score on each event, and then we will add oh, the total scores okay. all together, and uh, and that will that's how we will determine the winner. Now, you'll recall in back in the day when Brutal Barracuda was doing these, and we did a foot bag was one of the events we did. And d- Did you win that, as I recall, back do you remember the old footbag uh, challenge? I do the remember it. Challenge? I did do you win that it. one? I did not win it. 
I do not. Oh, remember. I remember you're decent at the old foot bag. Yeah, uh, I'll have to go back, but I'll have to start practicing up again. And of course, our our community of Discord uh, uh, people is much much larger than the Brutal Barracuda Challenge. So it, I can't wait. It's going to be a real real fun time. Yeah. Uh, I big we props games, to Hermski for yeah. doing this. Oh yeah, thanks Hermski. All right, so uh, let's go ahead and thank all the fine folks that have joined us in the chat this week. Frodo NL is here, Paul Kitching, Real Refi, Picard 2010, uh, Pixels at Dawn doing a great job modding, Jason Warns, Duke L. Hudson, Hermski, uh, Duncan Styles, uh, L, uh, Leif, Leif Kelland, uh, I know L. Curtis Boyle was here earlier, Terry was here earlier. Thank you guys so much. Uh, Figgy is here with us. Uh, thank you guys so much for joining us live. We do record the show live every Friday uh, on twitch.tv slash Amigos Retro Gaming. Want to wish a very happy birthday to Lord Soup, a.k.a. Polyester Lynx, an Amigos supporter, one of our most prolific Discord contributors. Happy birthday, Polyester Lynx. Uh, we love you, man. And... Uh, we want to thank Pixels at Dawn for suggesting this game to the Amigos Game Selection Committee. Congratulations, Pix. And uh, again, if you want to join our Discord community, it's just a dollar a month. A dollar a month, man. It's it's not very much money. You can join nope. in on all of the good times, all the discussions, all the high score challenges. You can be part of the Amigos family. We'd love to have you. Patreon.com slash Amigos podcast. Very good. And also we should mention that uh, uh, Kilobytes of Caffeine posted a picture, I think it's today, of his three-year-old. I believe it's the birthday of uh, his young one there. Oh. So happy birthday to uh, probably one of our youngest, hopefully, listeners uh, from Kilobytes of Caffeine. I don't know if you saw the picture of eating cake, as I recall. So Fantastic. Very good. Fantastic. Double birthday action. I hey. feel like, uh, you ever watch uh, 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 Bob Barker, these guys, they do the old birthday, or the guys, Joe Nooks on Marty Brennan, I'm a happy anniversary to Fred and Bill Oh, yeah. Murray. That's one of my favorite <laughs> things about baseball. Baseball is so slow. <laughs> That they can they can work in it all. They can work yeah, in it man. all, just like this show. Um, all right. We also want to thank all of our um, all of our Twitch subscribers. You can also subscribe to the show on Twitch and get all the same benefits as you do on Patreon. Uh, Frodo and L, Mitsuyama, Jost eighty tapes from the crypt, still adolescing. Anthony Jarvis, Rushi MSX, Gigglebox, Graham Vebke, Chris Folds, Macintosh Librarian, Demata Wylak. Buck Owens, Retro Jerry, Goto Gub Sub, and Hermski. Thank you guys for subscribing on Twitch. Last week, the Patreon song, Aaron. This was College Music Par Excellence. Did you go back and listen to it? I did. I didn't know what it was. Okay. Well, I gave away a, a, a hint. I said it was related to my username, which of course means it was They Might Be Giants song. The name of this song, okay, let me ask you a question, Aaron. Are you a fan of like They Might Be Giants? Guys. I am. I was back in the day. Okay. What was their big breakthrough album? Oh, uh, gosh. What was their big breakthrough song? Was it uh, Anna Ning? Was that it? Or no. uh, they they oh they did the uh, they did the sound. It depends. They've had several breakthroughs. What about they did the uh, the theme song for the TV show? That was a big hit. Yep. Uh, they did the kids album. That was a big, huge album for them. So their their biggest selling album had um, had Istanbul, not Constantinople, on it. I had that one. Had yeah. Particle Man on it. Remember that yeah. Particle Man? So uh, the yeah, name of yeah. that album was Flood, and Flood. The, the the name of the the song that I did was also from Flood. It was called Dead. Not a hit, yeah. but uh, but one. it was one I wanted to do. And so we want to congratulate Alien Breeder, Mitsuyama, and Anthony Jarvis. For getting I can't the believe correct people got answer. that. Wow. You don't think there's a lot of They Might Be Giants fans in this show? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a deep cut, is my point. It's from their... I had that album, and I didn't remember it. Well, you don't remember much. That's... It's true. We got... Uh, so, this week, uh, if you know the a Amigo Supporters song that I'm about to sing for you live, we're going to mix it up a little bit. I'm going to sing one live this week. Uh, you can send me a message at john at amigospodcast.com and I will list you as a, a winner on the next show. So here we go. 
Cello Code, Mark Ryland, Olaf Hope, Hermski, Jonah A.K. Simulan, Jeremy Jones, Ethan Little, Alien Breeder, J. Velociraptor, Cal Bird Boy, Kel Fuchs, Lane Denson, Luke Hudson, John Cook, Rich Drury, Roshi, Roosh, Roto, and El Sol, Incisor, Tech, Mace, Jurgen, Mr. Cola, Daniel Williams, Bernard Lucas, Jerry Dennington, Tor Club, Commodore Kid Reflection, Simon Ledge, Cap'n Crispy, Kilobytes, and Caffeine, Gary, Heather Free, Lodge, Kate, Fox, David, Bigford, Cameron, Armstrong, Andy, Jones, Lobster, Minator, Ten Men of Amiga, Retrocast, Bernard, Quinn, Retro, Man Cave, Tim Drew, Simon Rose, Joseph Harrison, Kyle Hedder, Rob O'Hara, Matthew Lara Moore, Andy Craig, Sean Zo, Barkbit, Roland Burke, Andrew Mux, Joe, the Zombie Leaf, Kellond, Alan, Kebab, Chekote, Level, Lord John Marshall, Matthew Perron, Ricketer, Rosha, Creepy, Dead Boy, Figgy, CTZ, Stefan, Sorgard, Bortensen, Evan, Helen, Plindo, 75, Christopher, Hassel, Ravi, Abbott, Chris, Fold, Stream, Catcher, Lauren, Sheru, Graham, Vepke, Adam, Batters, B. O'Brien's, Retro, and Vintage, Gary, Hucker, C. Brian, Jones, Paul Bossman, Harrington, Duncan Styles, Steve's from the Crypt, Josh Nan, Adam Bradley, Jonas Rulo, T-A-H-T, Eric Nelson, Kim Tommy, Humbug, Stad, Daniel Bingston, Brutal Barracuda, Darren Coles, Jason Warns, Pixel at Dawn, and Kjolbjord Barfen. You made my liver quiver with that one, but Thank horrible. You. Horrible. Next week, Aaron... We are going to play something a little different. We're going to play something more in your lane. Okay. 007, License to Kill. Yes. Yeah. All right. I haven't played any of the Bond stuff. That'll be great. This is or uh, not. suggested to the Amigos Game Selection Committee by none other than Paul, a.k.a. Hermski. You know, Bond games are either really good or they're the dirt worst, but <laughs> <laughs> we don't know what we're getting for on this one. <laughs> All right. Well, thank you guys so much for listening. We will see you next week. And until then, adios. adios.